Greetings and welcome back to Old Red Eye's house. Today we are doing another installment of Karate Corner, and I think this makes uh, 24 episodes. That's a lot. And some of those are even double features, so I mean, think about that garbage. But today we are watching Attack Force, and I must tell you, it is a doozy for sure, and it fits right into what we all love, so let's get to it, because this is Red Eye Reviews. Okay, so you all remember when I said this movie was about aliens? It turns out it is not. Yeah, we were all lied to. But funny story, screenwriter Joe Halpin, you know, the guy that writes all these movies, is quoted in the book, he wrote a book, Seagology, the ass-kicking films of Steven Seagal, as saying that Attack Force had originally been written and filmed as a movie called Harvester which was a sci-fi horror movie with Steven Seagal and his men battling an invading force of vampire space aliens. You heard me right, vampire aliens. But after Seagal, Halpin, and the director had delivered the finished sci-fi film, the production and distribution company decided to just kind of scrap all the sci-fi space alien elements and then replace them with another plot entirely about super addictive drugs and a bunch of junkies that get turned into kind of superhuman killing machines. They called back a few of the lower paid actors for some reshoots, they redubbed the majority of Seagal's dialogue, and that is oh so sweet, and they totally re-edited the entire film and changed it into Attack Force, as it is now known. So Seagal and Halpin were uh, not involved, and they weren't really uh, told that's what was happening to their movie. But basically, they destroyed the movie that we all wanted to see. And now we get a movie where he just fights a bunch of junkies. And, I mean, it's still good, don't get me wrong, but it's not it's not vampire aliens good. We start at a facility guarding uh, some top secret stuff. Yeah. These guys break in and they start to steal the uh, stuff. For a movement on the west side of the perimeter, Commander. Roger that, Dwayne. What's your position? Wow, and Sigal's very first line of the movie is dubbed. We're off to a really good start. The bad guys are getting away with the top secret uh, stuff. <laughs> I have a visual he's turned towards the north. And his second line, also dubbed. I wonder if he even speaks at all in his own movie. But he does catch these bad guys. But now we need more troops for uh, this mission in Paris, because, you know, all the all the people just died in this really dumb encounter. The consequences are the same, no matter how you look at it. I mean, we made the treaties, they broke them, and now you sit back and expect me to clean up after them? That's not going to happen, you hear? God, this might be a record, folks. Six and a half minutes in and we still have not heard... Seagal's real voice. But these new troops do arrive. They start reading the script that Seagal gave them. Marshal Lawson, the man walks with an air of confidence. It's rarely seen in this day and age. <laughs> There's just two things you need to know about Marshal Lawson. One is he's a bad motherfucker. And two, he's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, you can't really compliment the man this hard yet. I mean, you haven't even heard his voice. How do you know what he sounds like? But these new recruits do decide to go out on the town and party it up. Yeah, we were uh, thinking of going to a titty bar. I ain't getting no love and I'm too old for love. Oh, and now you speak. Yeah, and your first line doesn't even make sense. I ain't getting no loving and I'm too old for love. Whatever the hell that means. The men do go to a club. They meet this girl. They ask the club owner if they can take her home with them and party. I'm, I guess that's how clubs work. He agrees and they all head back to the apartment. At the apartment, the girl goes a little crazy, you know, and uh, attacks and kills all of them. Seagal goes to check on his boys, and he kicks uh, an open door more open. I guess that felt a little unnecessary, maybe calm down a bit. They do find those dead guys, and they backtrack to the club to figure out what exactly has happened. And now they, they don't show us this or tell us this, um, but they arrest this club owner for uh, more questioning, and we just find him later in the movie. Seagal goes and looks at the bodies, and he learns that there is a trace amount of a special drug called CTX in them. So he heads to the secret drug lab that is run by the military here. I really need to know uh, who did this. <laughs> what is that? Are you, are you an old man now? Let me ask you something. What's the story with Majestic and drug movement? Hey, who let somebody's grandfather into the sound booth? Get out of here! I need access to an armory. I'll see what I can do. You know the weapons I like. Jesus Christ. Okay, just clear your throat, dude. I don't know how old you are, but get a lozenge? Sounds like you got a lot of phlegm backed up in there. 
Meanwhile, they interrogate that club owner. He doesn't even try to be stealthy. He tells them everything. We learn that the drug CTX makes you super strong and aggressive. Oh, and it also makes you blink sideways. Yeah. Uh, that's how they explain away the whole alien angle that we all wanted so badly. Uh, the drug did it. But he also tells them that they want to release a bunch of these drugs into the water supply in Paris. So everyone will be addicted and I guess they can make money selling the drug. But because of this, they shut down the drug testing facility. I have orders to shut you down. All military drug testing programs have been canceled. Okay, first of all, let's pause. Back it up. Are your official orders written on lined notebook paper? And you felt the need to fold it six times? Ah, very official. I wouldn't be surprised if it was written in crayon. A little bit later, this lady who acts an awful lot like an alien but is not, she's just a junkie, she shows up and tries to fight everybody by herself. I'm not really sure why she wants to do this, but she does. His body just knock over a room's pillar? Okay, what is happening? Is this building made of cardboard? Like, I knew the walls in Europe could be thin. But I mean, not this thin, right? Jesus Christ. So they subdue the alien junkie, and then Seagal gets some uh, new weapons. Yeah, you're turning them into some kind of shitty Wolverine, I guess. Did you make the wrist straps big enough? Better add just, you know, a couple more notches in his belt, just to be sure. So the squad hangs out to go over the uh, new plan. Can I talk to you? Yeah, talk away. In private? Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay, there's no way they didn't realize this is a bad movie, yeah? How in the hell could you sit there and edit this garbage with a straight face? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, some black ops dudes want to kill Seagal and his gang for even knowing about the CTX drug because it's secret. And uh, that's it. That's the reason we're given as to why black ops wants him dead. He learned about a secret. Whatever. So people show up, start killing each other. This guy just repels and dies. I I'm not really sure what his end game would have been in this scenario, but you did it. Whatever, these people die, the gang gets together, they go over their plan on how to attack the alien mothership full of drugs. Watch for the rabbit pulsation in the eyes. If you see that, you have no time. What about containment, Marshal? We believe that the perimeter is secure and we will be able to stop any breaches. Okay, you know, it, it's, it's one thing to have voiceover in your movie, but to have voiceover in the first line and then not voiceover the second line immediately after... That looks really bad. I maybe just don't do it that way. But I, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, you guys are the experts, not me. They do head off to the evil lair. Okay, I'm going to give this movie the tiniest bit of credit. These two shots right here, they're not that bad. Like, if you just saw these scenes, you could convince yourself that this is a good movie. Uh, it's not, but these two scenes are. So they do. They go to this mansion. They see a bunch of people. He's like, are you on drugs? They go, no, man, I'm totally not on drugs. Okay, check their eyes. Their eyes aren't doing uh, anything weird at all. Yeah, we don't really think they're on drugs. And then Seagal goes, yeah, you guys are on drugs. It just straight murks these people. Jesus Christ. I'm pretty, that's just called murder. Call it what it is. <laughs> you just murdered those people. But they all leave the scene of the crime pretty quickly and they head to the actual base because I guess that was not the base. They're going to another place now. And when we start this, uh, whatever this is, we have a lot of good guys. But for the next, I don't know, 15 minutes, it's a series of a single person wandering away from the group, getting killed, and then the group comes back and finds them dead. Wander away, murdered, find them dead. Wander away, <laughs> murdered, find them dead. Even the girl dies. Okay, shh, you're supposed to be dead. Stop moving your eyes. Uh, we then find the smartest character in any Seagal movie I've ever seen. This dude is glued to Seagal's side. He knows his best chance of survival is right next to Seagal, because let's face it, we all know he's going to survive this movie. Man, glue your freaking hand to him. That is your only hope. I lost everybody, sir. They're all dead. Yeah, well, maybe don't split up constantly. I mean, that's that's on you, really. The bad guy shows up and just shoot him in the face, right? Like, he's picked 
all of you off in the dark this whole time. Forget this honorable duel garbage. Shoot this guy in the face. We do get in a duel. He does finally get messed up, but he isn't the main boss. Turns out the main boss is a lady who is called the Queen. Yeah, even though they're not aliens anymore, they still call her the Queen. And also shoot her, right? Uh, she's wearing a tank top, dude. End this right now. He somehow manages to like cut her in the chest and it cuts her entire tank top in half so her boob is like on the verge of falling out the whole fight. It doesn't fall out. He does kill the big bad boss. Everyone else is dead though, except <laughs> Mother Flippin' Nobu. I told you, bro, smartest man in a Seagal movie ever. You, sir, are a goddamn survivor and you deserve your own spinoff movie, if I'm being honest but we don't get one because the movie's over and they don't know how precious his man is. And lastly, in the credits, Seagal has a stunt double and a photo double? Somebody explain to me what in the hell a photo double is because it sounds like the person whose body we see on the cover of the movie, maybe that's a photo double? I don't know. Anyways, that was a trip. So now let's take a trip to Red Eye Reacts. Wow, Seagal, you put a strip club in your movie and there's no nudity. Wait. He's restrained himself. Maybe this is a new Happy Gilmore. Also, if I didn't know any better, that bouncer, that's a goal. Yeah, well, the police ain't working fast enough. Shut up and kiss me, you fool. Ah, yes, the good old Ikea shower curtain. <laughs> that's what these are. I'm sorry, lady. Did you have a stroke? You're only talking out of the right side of your mouth. Are you aware of this? And now, the worst voiceover I have ever heard. You sure this is secure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I set it up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I set it up. What can I do for you, Marshal? I'm flattered. Really flattered you recognize my voice. I'm flattered you recognize his voice too, especially, you know, given how many different voices he has in this movie. I mean, he uses two voices in this phone call. Iran's base has been located in a small village somewhere outside of Bordeaux called... All right, I'll uh, send you an encryption with the gory details. You drive up here with no headlights on, but then you all come out waving flashlights like you're playing tag? <laughs> oh my god, is that... That's a little bondage -y for my taste. Did you have to restrain her legs like that? That's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Up next on Kurate Corner, we have Flight of Fury. And this looks real solid. John is sent to recover a stolen stealth bomber. His trusty sidekick Roger and his ever-faithful Jessica fight the rebels. Okay, ever-faithful Jessica? Is, is she a dog? Who describes a person like that? I, well, it doesn't matter. We will find out. But thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Like the video, hit the bell, thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, go do some voiceover work. I mean, it's bound to be better than whatever the hell this is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I set it up. I need access to an armory. You know the weapons I like. Sure. We will see you in the next one. And until then, stay happy and stay healthy.